Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Ford, and I am the Drilling Engineering Lecturer here in Institute of Petroleum Engineering at Harriet Watt University. And today I'd like to talk to you about the drilling section of the field development planning project which you're about to undertake. What I'm going to talk to you about are the three elements of the drilling program part of the field development plan. The three things I want to talk to you about, brief introduction explaining how you should view this activity. Then I'm going to talk to you about the preparation and the background data that you will use for the, as the basis of your drilling program. And then I'd like to talk to you about the individual sections of the drilling program that you'll be preparing. Now, when you're preparing your drilling program, what you really have to think of, what you have to imagine yourself as being is the drilling engineering department of a large oil company. This should be in your mindset. You are responsible for preparing this program on behalf of the company. Don't simply see it as an academic exercise. What the company is looking for is a fit-for-purpose drilling program. One that is suitable to the field that you're operating in. Remember that you're preparing a program which is specific to your field. I don't simply want to see all of the considerations that are given in the manual for any particular aspect of the program. What I really want to see is your justification and explanation for the specific equipment or tools or design practices that you're using in your specific environment. Now the background data you'll use for the preparation of your program is basically going to be the geological prognosis and the pore pressure prognosis. You get these from the geologists and reservoir engineers responsible for your field. Now you might find in the geological prognosis that there isn't very much data above the reservoir. If you do have mud logs available for that area of the well, then use them of course. But if you don't, then look at the regional geology in the area from which your well is derived, for instance the North Sea, and get some idea of what the overburden, what all the rocks above the reservoir look like, and base your design on that. What you're really looking for are the formations that will be significant when you're designing the program. Formations that are going to cause problems, give you difficulty in drilling the well, such as unstable shales or fractured chalk. Now when you're looking at the pore pressure, what you should be looking at is offset data. Again, you will be provided with information probably on the reservoir pressures, but there may be other information from formations above the reservoir and you would use this accordingly. If you don't have data above the reservoir, it's okay to assume that all of the formations are normally pressured. Remember that you can make assumptions about pore pressure, um, but if you do make those assumptions, they should be justified. Now, when you're preparing the program, this portion of the field development project, a guideline for what you need to include can come from the individual chapters in the drilling notes that you have as part of the course. In particular, look at the summary at the back of the casing design chapter, where I've listed out, I've used a template which is typical of the kind of template that is used to design drilling programs, showing the hole sizes, the casing sizes, the mud weights, etc. And use that as a basis for, for, um, for laying out the critical information about your well design. Now, the main issue in your drilling program section of the FDP, the main issue is not what you do, but why you do it. So, for each section, I want a justification for the assumptions that you're using, the tools or equipment that you're using. You really have to justify why you're actually taking, making the decisions that you're actually making and that you have prescribed in your drilling program. Now I'd talk, like to talk to you a little bit about the specific sections within the drilling program. Now you don't have to include all of these sections. Some of them, of course, you will, will, have, will include in every field development plan, such as the casing and cementing design. But I want to give you an idea of what, if you do include a section, what exactly you should be thinking about. Now, one of the things is selection of the rig. Now, 
What you can do for this is go and have a look at the rigs that are available from various different drilling contractors. One that is specific and suitable for your particular environment. Now the BHA, bottom hole assembly, I don't want a lot of detail on the conventional BHAs, but I do want to know which, which particular BHA you would use for your highly deviated wells, with a justification for why you're using that particular bottom hole assembly, the directional drilling assembly basically. When it comes to bits, I want to know what type of bits, not specific to a manufacturer, but what type of bits, for instance, roller cone or PDC, and why you use them in the particular formations that you're drilling in your particular field. Again, going back to the rationale for a particular piece of equipment, in this case, drill bit that you're using in your field. Why you think it's most suitable for your particular formations. And lastly in this section, uh, looking at the pore pressures and well control. Um, basically what I'm looking at here is you have to cons consider and specify what prediction and detection techniques you might be using if you're drilling a particularly challenging well. So to anticipate what kind of pressures you're going to drill into. What precautions you would take if, for instance, you got lost circulation. And you can actually talk about the rating of the BOP and why it's rated to a certain value. Now, shown on this slide are the, are the main components of your drilling program. The casing, the directional drilling, the drilling fluids. These will be in everybody's um, drilling program. Okay? In the case of the casing design and cementing program, what I'm looking for is a design for a single well. Okay? So the casing and cementing for a single well, not for every single well. Okay? And what I'd be looking for is why you're setting the casing, where you're setting it, so the casing setting depth for the whole string, yeah? and the other strings, surface, intermediate, production. Uh, I'd be looking for the, the justification for the sizes that you're using for your, your casing string, of course. Of course, I want the calculations around the weight and grade that you're going to use, which will be based on the assumptions you make about pore pressures and instability and things like this. Okay? And then when it comes to cementing, I want you to address the key issues of cementing. I'm not really concerned in the, around the setting time, etc., but critical issues such as top of cement. The, the, the use of single or two-stage cementing for the eventuality of possibly lost circulation during the cement job. So that's around casing and cementing. In the directional well plan, what I'd like to see is that one of your more challenging wells, what build-up rates, what tangent angles will you be using? So I want to see something about the design. And of course, I want to see something about the directional drilling tools and, and surveying techniques that you're going to use as you drill the well. So I want some justification and rationale around those. And when it comes to the drilling fluids, again, I want you to look back at your, your geological prognosis and I want you to justify the fluids that you propose to use on the basis of your geological prognosis and indeed your pressures for the eventual, for the, in particular for the mud weights. Okay, so again, what I'm looking for is why are you using this equipment? Why are you taking these measures? Why are these points raised and, and included in your drilling program? Not so much the what, although that has to be listed, but I'm really looking for your justification and rationale for the equipment that you're using. Now here are some additional sections that you might want to include in your drilling program. There is, for instance, the MWD tool that you're going to use. I'd like to know why you're using the MWD specifically, which particular services, directional drilling, formation evaluation, and what benefit they're going to be bring to the drilling of the well or subsequently in terms of collecting data for formation evaluation. So I want to see a justification for the range of services that you're going to include in your MWD tool, if you are indeed going to use one. If you're drilling a subsea well, you'd want to include a section on subsea drilling. And again, I don't want a great deal of detail here. I just want to know any particular issues that you might think might be relevant. For instance, if you're in particularly deep water and you're going to use maybe a guidelineless subsea drilling system. But I don't want a great deal of detail on the subsea system. This, of course, will be related back to the drilling rig that you're going to use. Uh, the water depth will have a significant impact on the particular type of offshore drilling rig that you might use, if indeed you are drilling offshore. Then I'd like a section, a summary section, maybe one table and one page, showing the major risks that you anticipate in the drilling of your well and how you're going to mitigate or minimize those rigs in the drilling of the well. This would normally go as an attachment to the drilling program summary. 
And many of these, of course, will have been measure, mentioned in subsequent sections. So this would be a place where you'd bring these together just to list the kind of risks that you think you're going to encounter during the well. And lastly, of course, I would encourage you to consider new technologies during the drilling of the well. And remember again, what I'm looking for is why you're using those technologies, as well as what you're going to use. But it's why you're going to use it, with a justification for why those particular new technologies are going to bring benefit to your company when they're used on your field. Okay? Now, what would be ideal is if you could do a quantitative analysis in, in terms of the costs and the benefits, but that probably won't be possible. In other words, you won't be able to come up with a, a a, a cost benefit, in other words, how much it's going to reduce the cost of drilling the well or how much uh, it's going to improve the efficiency of the drilling of the well. You probably find it difficult to justify that. Equally, on the other side, the, the costs associated with, with actually uh, with implementing the technology, so the cost of the equipment itself. So really what I would expect here is more of a qualitative justification for using the equipment. You know, why do you think it's going to be useful uh, in your particular field? By qualitative, I mean qualitative, I just mean general indications about why that technology will bring you benefits. Okay, well, that's all I wanted to talk to you about today. And I'd just like to say good luck with your, with your uh, drilling program. And I look forward to seeing your submission. <laughs>